I have been avoiding this for months. Then I turn on YouTube one day and it suggests this to me. Life isn't fair and sometimes things done to us can open the door for demonic torment. How do I address that topic here? So reluctantly, welcome back to How to Be a Christian Counselor. The I can't believe I am even explaining that exercising demons will not resolve your mental trauma addiction. Hi, I am Shannon Q, and if you are new to this series, you may want to click the playlist above to see exactly who and what Above and Beyond Christian Counseling Services and the NCCA are, though that is not critical for today's discussion. As always, I will include resource links and references in the description box below. Please advocate for your own understanding and check my sources and investigate all of these concepts for yourself. There are also links to legitimate mental health resources if you are looking for help or are affected by or relate to some of the difficult concepts that we're going to discuss here today, please utilize them. In previous videos, I have done more of an overview of NCCA certified Christian counselors and their qualifications and therapeutic strategies. In this video, I'd like to start focusing on the types of targeted counseling strategies they publicly profess to employing with clients in their really expensive paid counseling practice. I watch quite a few of their videos, and when this showed up in my suggested column, I got more than a little bit agitated. People who have suffered from extensive physical, emotional, and mental trauma are amongst the most vulnerable among us. If they seek help, and it in turn generates compound trauma, horrific and dramatic things can happen to them psychologically. So when Mr. Ibbotson here said this, I thought it was worth paying attention to. We have ministered to many hundreds of abuse victims and have seen them set free from demonic torment. Sins were committed against these folks. They were not the abusers. Look, life happens to us all and none skate through it unscathed. Some experience truly devastating, life-changing events and seek help of all kinds to get past the pain. If Above and Beyond Christian Counseling Services is seeking paid patronage from people who have suffered from and are living with the aftermath of severe traumatic, abusive, emotional experiences with the promise of relief and a solution to that pain, I should certainly hope it has proven efficacy. Otherwise, the potential for amplifying and worsening that mental state is substantial. So let's have a look at the approach that they purport to. Ungodly soul ties through sexual unions and controllers in people's lives represent one important entry point for demons. Ungodly sexual soul ties are established willingly through consensual activity, but also can be the result of sexual abuse. Bodies and souls are joined in the sexual act, and demons can uh, pass from the perpetrator to the victim. Anybody have money on demons? Forgiveness represents one powerful tool at every believer's hand to close another significant entry point for devils. The longer it takes after the transgression by the other party, the more lousy fruit can manifest in a person's life. So let's talk for just a little bit about forgiveness and trauma. In most recovery and rehabilitation therapies surrounding traumatic life events, there is an aspect of the therapeutic process constructed around the concept of forgiveness. In fact, there are entire therapeutic strategies specifically focused on navigating this potential aspect of the recovery process. What is imperative to note is that recovery in all cases is not contingent upon forgiveness. Forgiveness therapies and those that incorporate and accommodate forgiveness as a component do so if and when it is appropriate for the victim who sought that treatment. It is possible, plausible, and okay to never 
forgive a transgressor, and still recover. Forgiveness under any structured recovery program isn't and shouldn't ever be proposed as mandatory. Those that transgress against you are not owed your forgiveness. Any therapeutic recovery strategy worth engaging in is individualized and focused on the needs of the victim. There are significant risks in pressing victims to forgive when they are not ready. Unfortunately, Donald, our PhD in Christian counseling here, is going to give me ample opportunity to demonstrate why. Many years ago, I ministered to a woman who had been sexually abused by a male neighbor. She was a young girl at the time. After the incident, her mother wisely, and I'm sure painfully, helped her to deal with the trauma. And she had her do two things very quickly. Number one, she had her forgive the man. Being young at the time, the mother probably had to teach the youngster about what forgiveness was and exactly how to do it. So the opportunity to elucidate has presented itself fairly quickly, it would seem. In this instance, just referenced a child. A child was violated by a neighbor. These principles hold true for an adult who has suffered similar trauma, but the situation is inarguably amplified. When you are a child who hasn't yet reached full cognitive development. When forgiveness is introduced as an imperative to a victim of abuse, several things occur from a cognitive perspective. Primarily, it places the burden on the victim. When a victim is not yet ready, and they do not ever have to be, to work on forgiveness, pressing forgiveness as a necessity for their recovery places an additional mental burden on them when they are already under significant mental upset. Now, instead of focusing on the aspects of their own recovery and what that will ultimately entail for them, they are introduced to an additional external stressor, compounding and amplifying their already exacerbated emotional upheaval. Forgiveness should only be incorporated as a component of recovery if and when it benefits the victim on their path forward. Otherwise, you are forcing a victim into a place of guilt and shame for not appropriately considering their abuser, which in turn serves to invalidate the impact of their abuse. Secondly, over the weeks and months that followed, the two of them would pray consistently for that man, that God would bless him and pour his spirit out upon him. That difficult assignment was pressed by Jesus in Luke 6, 27 and 28, when he implored his followers to, quote, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. This is where this approach alone, even if we disregard the demons, can become dangerously damaging. When someone is traumatized by physical or emotional violence, that is enacted upon them by a perpetrator, a shift in focus to that perpetrator can send the message that the abuse they experienced isn't valid or important compared to the consideration of the person who caused that trauma. There is a very important space in therapeutic settings for forgiveness, empathy, and even ultimately reconciliation. But prior to that being healthy or even conceivable for the victim, the trauma itself needs to be addressed. And I must stress again that forgiveness can be beneficial in many situations if desired by the victim for closure and mental clarity, but it is not, should not, and can not be presented as a requirement. Trauma causes myriad mental, social, and physical effects that manifest differently and vary in severity and complexity from individual to individual. If prior to addressing, acknowledging, reconciling, and assessing the impact of those effects, you focus on the transgressor and not the needs of the victim, you can generate additional anxiety, fear, confliction, and feelings of shame that amplify depression and anxiety and send a message to the victim that it's their job 
to absolve their abuser of their crime in order for them to heal. It's negligent and it's damage laden and it pisses me off. We've met with many clients who have been uh, victims of similar traumas and work to help them get set free and healed by the power of the Holy Spirit through deliverance and counseling. It'd be great if you'd stop. What was different about this woman? I remember her words vividly. She said, I really don't think that that event had much of an impact on my life because I chose to forgive that man quickly and pray for him. Truthfully, I don't remember the exact issue she was dealing with, but I do believe that she had supernaturally dealt with this traumatic event in her past by being faithful to the Bible's commands. It is incredibly convenient that there is always an anonymous, uncooperated client story that clearly affirms every single one of their therapeutic strategies for mental health counseling. I would be very curious to hear from those of you who have received this type of trauma counseling to see if firsthand accounts differ drastically from the way they're presenting them here. If you have an experience and you're willing and comfortable in sharing, please leave it in the comment section down below. It may help someone who's considering this type of counseling understand why it's really important to seek qualified mental health assistance. If the abuser is not quick to forgive someone and break the ungodly soul tie, then he or she is granting the, that abuser continued control over him or her, continually focusing on the transgression, praying against the person, or not extending forgiveness really never brings the good fruit that Christians desire. There is no circumstance in which a counselor or therapist should direct the appropriate time for a client or victim to advance through any phase of the therapeutic process. The circumstance and carefully assessed preferential outcomes of the client or what should be paramount. One of the reasons that an approach like this can potentially resonate with so many people is the grain of surface level common sense type truth that claims like this seem to depend upon. If and when a person who has suffered from trauma is ready to forgive, forgiveness can absolutely be a path towards healing. Any refutation of their position would almost seem to be a counter to the very concept of forgiveness as a therapeutic tool, but that's just not the case. Allowing for forgiveness as a guided and informed option is valuable, but mandating it is detrimental. But this is what one can expect when you seek paid mental health counseling from people with false accreditation and no grasp on the basic concepts regarding mental health and recovery. They rely upon common sense tropes that sound appealing without context and a reliance on your faith in their deity to extend legitimacy upon their methods. We've also um, seen instances where we contend that a person's natural defenses, their mental and emotional tools that God gives every person, sometimes I think they're just overwhelmed in traumatic events. And demons of fear, maybe in anger and other spirits, can enter and remain long after the event has passed. This is yet another additional dangerous proclamation on a multitude of levels. It reduces the effects and aftermath of trauma to either be caused by demons or considered to be something that you can resolve organically by your natural God-given faculties. Indisputably, neither is the case. I wish it went without saying that there are no demons transferred into you when you suffer abuse. Your emotions and feelings regarding what happened to you are valid and deserve addressing. You owe no one an explanation for them. If they become overwhelming or detrimental, it is not your responsibility to forgive the transgressor in order to progress. And there are no demons. The feelings are real and they are yours. 
And I wish I could, but I, I can't simply have them exercised away. When believed, the idea that emotional turmoil is the result of demons that through no fault of your own have entered and manipulated your mind prevents you from fully addressing what has happened to you. There can be no thorough reconciliation of what has happened to you and the ultimate effect that it has had if the reasons for the trauma are scapegoated away to an external force. And the answer proposed is absolving your abuser, whether you're ready or not. It's clear from the word, God's ways are higher than our ways, and we often do not understand his thoughts. Why he allows, rather than stops, uh, evil activities to continue in people's lives, it's often a mystery to us. Sometimes we reap what we sow and bear the consequences, but that is not always the case. That's when we need to trust God's heart and his character when we cannot fathom his ways. It's really important to know that although I attained a degree in psychology, I am not a trained counselor, therapist, or clinician. Please not only validate what I say, but also seek qualified assistance if you need it. My commentary is based on my understanding of and research into the issues presented here and does not constitute an expert clinical opinion. Please, if you have suffered abuse or trauma, know that it is not your responsibility to ever forgive the person that victimized you. The path you take towards healing belongs to you and you alone. There is no mandate for it to look the way another person tells you it should. If someone is placing pressure on you to heal their way, find a space where you can be heard and understood on your journey. It is yours and no one else's. It will take the course set by you when you're ready and at your pace, and that's okay. And for the love of God, there's not a demon in you. It's a natural cognitive reaction to suffer in the aftermath of trauma. If you stumble upon recovery, you have not failed. You did not allow a demon back in through your transgression. You're human. This is normal. Keep going. People care. And you're worth continuing on. Don't contact above and beyond or any ncca licensed christian counselor please if you need it find someone who can really help you you matter and you deserve it thank you so much everybody who tuned in to watch today and a very massive thank you to my patrons who you can see on the screen here i am consistently in awe of your support of the work that i do on this channel it means the world to me and it has helped to motivate me to improve the overall quality of the work that i do here please if you do need help make use of the links that i've provided in the description you are worth it don't trust people from the ncca and as always please help elevate the discourse let's be a youtuber oh, i'm killing it Look, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I dropped on myself. <laughs> I just jinxed myself, so I'm fucked now. Fuck now! Emphasizing the wrong words. Do, 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 do. I'll put on more lip gloss. Maybe that'll make me smarter. Don't include those. I'll die. <laughs> do I look smarter? <laughs> I feel like I look smarter. <laughs> I think I did it.